Hello everyone, this is a last minute video to help you if you are sitting your AQA level 2 for the maths paper 2 this Wednesday and I'm going to offer you some last minute tips and advice, some predicted topic revision and some things to remember. Okay, so first up we have binomial expansion and there are three main things you need to remember for your binomial expansions and the first is Pascal's triangle and the second and third parts of your binomial expansion will be your terms raised to your powers okay so let's have a look at a quick example so 3 minus 2x to the power 4 first we need Pascal's triangle so we're starting 1 then 1 1 then 1 then 1 plus 1 in the middle gives us 2 then in this next row we have 3 3 1 then 4 6 4 1 and that is the row we're looking for okay so let's put those down here and these will be the starts of our five terms okay and the next bits are our um, terms in the expansion so first we have three and then we have minus 2x and it's really important we put that in brackets here so you can make sure we're dealing with the minus and the two properly and now we need to insert our powers so we need to go from 0 to 4 and 4 to 0 and it doesn't matter um, which way we do them because everything is symmetrical so let's say we go 4 here and 0 here then we can just carry on down there and in the opposite direction here and then we can just multiply those out to get our five terms and if they ask you for just let's say the coefficient of x squared then you don't actually need to work out all of these all you need to focus on is this term here where we have x being squared and here that would be 6 times 9 times the minus 2x squared is 4x squared so the minus cancels out and we end up with 54 times 4 which is 216 so the coefficient of x squared here is 216 Okay, moving on to three simultaneous equations. So these ones can be quite tricky, not in the sense of a method as much, but more in not making a mistake, right? So your method is quite simple. So you just need to reduce the equations to two variables and solve normally and substitute back in to find the third variable. So let's say we have these three equations here. Now what I like to do first is to label them. So one two and three then you need to take um, two pairs of the equations so let's say one and two and then two and three and you need to eliminate one variable from them so you're left with two equations with two variables each which you can solve as usual so let's say you want to eliminate z so we can add a, um, one and two together so that gives us 5x plus 12y for the z to cancel we end up with 59 on the other side and then for 2 and 3 we can eliminate z again so let's say 2 lots of equation 2 take away equation 3 gives us well 6x take away x is 5x 16y take away 2y is 14y then 2z's cancel and then we're left with 88 minus 15 on the other side which is 73 and you can see now we have two equations and just x and y which you can then solve for x and y and once we have x and y we can plug back into any one of the three equations up there to get your value of z okay next we have the equations of tangents and normals so the, your three steps here are to find dy by dx first and then sub in um, the value of x in the question to find the gradient at that point Step two is to find the common point to the curve and the tangent or the normal. And then step three is to find the equation of the line. Okay, so let's say we have y equals x squared minus four, as I've shown there. And we're trying to find the normal when x equals minus one. So where x equals minus one will be about here. And so the normal will look something like this. 
right, where it's um, perpendicular to the tangent, which I'll draw here in orange. So that's the tangent there. Your normal is perpendicular to your tangent. And so to find this, first you can differentiate to find dy by dx. So taking the power down there, we get 2x, and then taking 1 from the power, 2x to the power 1. And your 4 here actually has an x to the power 0. And so when you take 0 down, you end up with nothing. So our derivative is just 2x. And we need to find the gradient of first the tangent uh, at x equals minus 1. So dy by dx when x equals minus 1 equals 2 times minus 1, which is minus 2. So that's the gradient of the tangent there. So the tangent has gradient minus 2. So the um, normal will have um, the negative reciprocal. So that would be a half. And then we need to find the common point to the curve and the tangent, or the normal here, sorry. So when x equals minus 1, we know the equation of the curve. So we can plug that straight in. So the y value is going to be equal minus 1 squared minus 4, which gives us 1 minus 4, which is minus 3. So this point here on the curve is minus 1 minus 3. And then we can use the point on the normal and the gradient to find the equation. So first y equals a half x plus c using the gradient. Then we can plug in the values from the point. So minus 3 equals a half times minus 1 plus c. And we should end up with c being equal to minus 5 halves. OK, next we have increasing and decreasing functions. So again, here we have two steps. The first one is to find dy by dx and then set that equal to, or greater than or equal to 0. And here we have two steps. The first one is to find dy by dx and set this um, greater than zero or less than zero. So greater than zero if you're looking for increasing functions and less than zero if you're looking for decreasing functions. And then we need to solve the inequality we've just formed. So let's have a look at this example here. y equals x cubed minus 3x. So first we need to find dy by dx. And that is 3x the, uh, squared take away 3 and then we need to set this greater than 0 because we're looking for an in where it's increasing and then we can solve this by taking the 3 to the other side and then dividing by 3 so x squared has to be greater than 1 and then we need to and then, and then we can solve this first by dividing through by 3 so we have x squared minus 1 being greater than 0. And then we can draw a sketch of what this looks like. So we know x squared minus 1 factorizes to x plus 1, x minus 1. So we'll have two roots at minus 1 and 1. We're looking for where this function is greater than 0. And that will be here and here, where the graph is above the x-axis. So I'm just fill in the y-axis here. So the values of x for which this function is increasing when the gradient is greater than 0 is going to be where x is less than minus 1 and where x is greater than 1. And we can see that on this graph here. If we look at this point here being minus 1 and this point here being 1, then we can see that the graph is indeed increasing where x is less than 1. So the value of the function is getting greater and greater and greater. And then it's decreasing between minus 1 and 1, then increasing again on this side, past 1. Okay, and finally, we have solving trigonometric, uh, solving trigonometric equations. So first of all, a recap of what your trig functions look like. So here we have sine from 0 to 360. Here we have cos from 0 to 360. And finally, tan has asymptotes. So tan looks something like this from 0 to 360. Okay. 
Uh, two identities that you need to know. We need, first of all, tan of x is equal to sine of x over cos of x and sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. And these might be useful if you have um, equations like these two, where there's no obvious way to solve these outright. But for this one here, we can divide both sides by um, cos of x. So we have 2 sine of x over cos of x equals 1. And then we can use this identity up here to replace sine of x over cos of x with tan of x. So 2 tan of x equals 1. Then we can rearrange to get tan of x equals a half. And then we can use our graph. So where tan of x equals a half is here. So we have two solutions between 0 and 360. And you can use your calculator to find that. Find this first one here. And then you can add on 180 to find your second solution because tan has a period of 180. Okay. Um, for this second equation we have down there, sine squared x equals cos x. Here we can use the second identity we've got, sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1, to replace sine squared x with 1 minus cos squared x. If we rearrange here, by taking away cos squared x from both sides. So replacing sine squared x with 1 minus cos squared x. This then looks sort of like a quadratic, and we can make it look even more like a quadratic if we say let cos x equals c, and we have 1 minus c squared equals c, and we can rearrange to get c squared plus c minus 1 equals 0, and then solve as usual. Then you would get two values of c for which. Then from this, you would get two values of c, which is really cos of x. So you get cos of x equals something and cos of x equals something else. And then again, you can use the graph of cos of x. So let's say two solutions here and here. Then we have four solutions between 0 and 360. And just a note, it's really important you look at the interval for which they ask for your um, solutions in. Okay, finally, the product rule for counting. They will usually ask this question in the form of giving you some numbers and asking you a question like how many integers can be formed that are even and greater than 50,000. So, in this case, we know that because we have five integers and we need to form an integer that, integer that is greater than 50,000, then we need a five digit number. And because we know it's even, then we have to put two in that last slot. And um, because we have to be greater than 50,000, we can only have seven or nine in this first spot. And then any of the other numbers can go in the middle three. So we have to be really careful when we're counting the options now. So for this first box here, we have two options. For this last box, we only have one. Then for the middle three boxes, there are three integers left to choose for the first one. Then once we've chosen one for that first box there, we only have two left, then one for the final box. So in total, there are 2 times 3 times 2 times 1 times 1, which gives us 12 options. So there are 12 integers that can be formed that are even and greater than 50,000. And that is the end of this video. I hope you found this useful and best of luck for Wednesday.